Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD88-EXB400R-K 8x8 HDMI extension and matrix kit. This professional product makes it incredibly easy for you to share eight different media streams with separate remote locations up to 150 meters away over a single Cat5e, Cat6, or Cat7 cable. The product features local loopback functionality here at the primary site that allows you to easily monitor each of those media streams while you're simultaneously broadcasting it to those remote locations. Each of the receivers on the remote end includes a set of infrared blasters that will capture the remote control signals at that location and send those back digitally over the same LAN cable to the primary location so you can actually control the content you're watching. The product also features the very latest in power over cable technology, which means the minute you plug in the main sender unit, all the power required for these remote receivers is sent over those same LAN cables, which greatly simplifies your wiring. The product is also an 8x8 matrix, which means you have complete control over which of those media streams is sent to which location, and you can easily send a single media stream to all eight locations at the same time, or you can send different ones to different remote locations, depending on your needs, using the included remote control, the buttons on the front of the unit, or the embedded software. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you all the components that are included, and then I'll take a closer look at the two main components and explain exactly how they work, I'll list the features and specifications the product provides, and then I'll come back and actually install the product here to show you just how easy it'll be to use with your own equipment. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first pop open the box, you're gonna find the main sender unit, a power cord for that main sender unit, a set of brackets you can use to mount this up off the ground and out of the way. You'll find a dedicated 8-pin cable that can be used to connect it to your computer for software control. You'll find a connection block for audio. You'll find eight of the remote receivers. Now, I've got seven here and one in front of me. Each of these comes with the same set of accessories I'm going to describe in a second. So the remote receivers are here. You get a bracket to mount these up off the ground and out of the way. You'll find an RS-232 connection block in case you want to send RS-232 signals over that same LAN cable. You'll find a set of infrared blasters, and again, these are a little bit different. The larger head goes with the receiver. The smaller module actually goes with the sender unit over here. You'll find two sticky pads you can use to attach these to your media equipment, and you'll also find a warranty card, a full instruction manual that lists specification diagrams, connection diagrams, other information you'll need to understand in order to use the unit, and finally, a wireless remote control you can use to make selections of which media input is sent to which media output. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll actually take a closer look at the receiver units and the sender units, explain how they work, I'll list the features, and then I'll come back and actually do the demonstration. Inside the kit, you'll find the main unit, which is the 8x8 video matrix and the HDMI extender unit, a power cord you can use with this product, a set of heavy-duty brackets that mount to the side and allow you to mount this into a rack, a connection cable that's an 8-pin on both ends. You can use this to connect this product up to a laptop to control it through software. A remote control that easily allows you to select between inputs and outputs. A connection block that's used for the audio on the back of the unit. You can actually pass the audio from each of these media streams to a sound bar or an amplifier system for better quality sound. You'll find eight of the receiver modules in the unit. Each of these are exactly the same with the complement of accessories I'll describe here. Included with the receiver units are two infrared blaster modules, one with a larger head on it like this that actually plugs into the receiver unit. If you need it at the sender unit, you can plug this into the back of the sender unit, and I'll show you that in a minute. You'll also find sticky pads you can use to attach these to your media equipment, a set of brackets for each of the receiver modules to mount these up off the ground and out of the way. A connection block is also included in case you want to use this to send RS-232 control signals between the two units. A warranty card. And finally, a full instruction manual that lists parts diagrams, programming information, and other details you'll need to understand exactly how to use this unit. The kit includes eight receiver modules, and each of them operate exactly the same way. They all feature full metal enclosures, which make them incredibly durable and help to minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the sensitive electronics inside. On the front of each of the modules, on the left-hand side, you'll find a power indicator. The minute you add power to this unit, or if you connect it to the LAN connection back to the sender unit, because of the power over cable technology, the power required is sent over that LAN cable. But either way, as soon as power arrives at this module, it immediately starts an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics to make sure they're working okay. And when it passes that test, it'll light that LED, letting you know the module's ready to use. On the right-hand side, you'll find a service port. That's used for updating the firmware inside the unit in case upgrades are made later on. And to accomplish that, you'll connect the micro USB cable up here to your computer, move the file across to complete the upgrade. 
On either side of the modules, you'll find ventilation slots as well as on the bottom, and those are designed to keep the electronics inside at a very comfortable temperature. You'll also find mounting holes on the bottom, and those can be used with the included bracketing kit to mount these up off the ground and out of the way. On the rear of the unit are a series of connections. I'll start on the left-hand side with the power port. Again, you can plug this into a power supply, but because of the power over cable technology, simply connecting a LAN cable between here and the center unit will provide all the power you need to operate the product. To the right of that is the LAN connection, and that's the CAT5E, CAT6, or CAT7 cable you run back to the primary sender unit, and that's the only connection you'll make to that sender unit at the primary location. To the right of that is an HDMI output port. You'll connect up whatever display you'd like to enjoy the content that's being sent from that sender unit on, right here with an HDMI cable. To the right of that is an audio output port. This product allows you to strip the audio from the media being sent and pass that along to a home stereo system or a sound bar for better quality audio. And to do that, you'll plug in a left and right analog 3.5 millimeter plug right here and connect it up to your sound bar. To the right of that are the two infrared blaster ports, infrared in and infrared out. In the case of the receiver, you're going to plug the larger module into the infrared in port, and that's going to collect all the remote control signals from this location and send those back to the primary location over that same LAN connection. And finally, there's an RS-232 connection right here on the end, and that's used for sending RS-232 control signals across that same LAN connection. If you need to use that, there's a block included that makes connecting to that very easy. Now we'll take a closer look at the main unit, which actually contains the 8x8 video matrix, as well as the HDMI media extender function, all inside this one cabinet. Now starting on the left-hand side of the front, you'll notice a large LED display, and that'll provide a lot of really good information about the current status of the product, including which input is sent to which output. If you go into the menu settings to make configuration changes, all of those options will be listed here. You'll also find on that same display a power indicator. When you add power to the unit, it immediately starts an internal power on self-test just like the receiver units. And when it passes that power on self-test, it'll light that LED, letting you know it's ready to use. Below that is a little infrared window, and that's used with the included remote control. When you're trying to make changes with the remote control, you'll want to point it at that window because the receiver behind there will accept those signals and make the changes you require. To the right of that are eight input buttons and eight output buttons, and those are what you use to manually select which input is being sent to which output. So for example, if you want input one to go to output number three, you would tap the output first, tap the input, and hit enter. And that would bind those two together and send whatever media was on input number one to display in number three. And you can make those changes as often as you need using the buttons or the remote control or even through software. To the right of that are a few other buttons, starting with the menu button. That allows you to jump right into the configuration settings. So if you want to change things like EDID settings or resolutions or other things that the product allows you to change, you'll tap the menu button. The display will light up with the current status of what configuration step you're on. You can step up, step down. Once you get into a step that you want to make changes, you'll hit the enter button. That allows you to make those changes again, step up, step down. Find the selection you want, hit enter again, and you're good to go. To the right of that is a power button, and that can be used to turn the product on and turn it off. And below that is a lock button. What the lock button does when you tap it is it locks out all these buttons on the front. So that way, nobody can walk up to it and inadvertently push one of the buttons and change your output settings. So once you're set and you're happy with the way the inputs are lined up with the outputs, tap that lock button, and that way nobody can, again, inadvertently change things on the fly. On the rear of the units where you'll make all your connections, now starting in the upper left hand corner, you'll find a bank of nine ports that are labeled infrared in, and below that, another bank of nine ports labeled infrared out. And these are used with the infrared blaster kits that are included with the product. Normally what you'll do is connect the larger module at the receiver end at the remote location. And what that'll do is collect all those remote control signals, send them back to the primary location to be rebroadcast out of the transmitter module that's plugged into the corresponding port below. So under normal conditions, these will be open, but you'll plug the smaller module in for each of those remote locations here. Now, the reason there are nine of them is because you can plug just one transmitter module in here, and that way every remote location can actually control the media that's being sent if you're sending it to all the locations simultaneously. Now, below that, you'll find four outputs, output one, two, three, and four. And over here on the right, four more outputs, five, six, seven, and eight. And those are connecting to your remote locations. Now, the reason there are two connections here is you're gonna connect your LAN cable up here, again, which is a CAT5E, CAT6, or CAT7, directly to the receiver. But I'd mentioned before, this product provides local loopback, and this allows you to actually enjoy the content here for that particular output. So if you want to monitor the streams you're sending to those remote locations, you can simply plug an HDMI cable in here to a local monitor, and it'll actually mirror whatever you're sending to that particular location. On the bottom are all your inputs, one through eight. 
And here's where you'll connect up your various media devices. Again, a standard HDMI connection to whatever media device you're connecting and you're good to go. Above that is audio output. This unit allows you to extract the audio from the media streams being sent. And what you can do is actually connect up either an analog connection right here or a coaxial connection analog above it and pass that along to a sound bar or an audio amplifier system for better quality sound. On the upper right hand side, you'll find two connections right here, TCP IP and an RS-232. Those are used for connecting to a computer, so you can actually program it through the software inside. Finally, there's a ground connection right there, a port here to plug in the AC cord that comes with it, and what I'll call a hard switch right here to turn the entire unit on. There is a power button on the front, but that's more of a soft power button. This one actually removes power from the entire unit. The front one just shuts off some of the outputs. And that's pretty much it for the back connections. On the side of the unit, you'll notice a pair of cooling fans, and these are high-performance fans that are designed to keep the electronics inside at a very comfortable temperature. If it gets warm inside, both of these will turn on to keep that electronics nice and cool. You'll also see a couple of mounting holes right here that can be used with the included bracketing kit, again, to mount this into a rack if that's the way you'd like to use the product. The O-Ray UHD88-EXB400R-K supports a wide range of modern media devices including laptops, streaming devices like Roku, gaming consoles, commercial broadcast displays, and DVD players. Its features include the ability to extend eight separate media devices to a remote location up to 150 meters away. It fully supports ultra-high definition 4K content. It provides local loopback of the video being sent to those remote locations back at the primary location. All of this is accomplished over a single CAT5e, -E, CAT6, or CAT7 cable. It also provides full matrix control over the content and includes a handheld remote where the unit can be controlled through software over a LAN connection. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use this product with your own equipment. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up two small media players. Each of them are displaying a different image and that'll make it easy to tell them apart. I've got the main unit right here. On this side of the table, I've set up two monitors that represent two of your remote locations. Now remember, you can have up to eight of those remote locations at different areas, up to 150 meters apart, each of which has its own receiver unit. Now the first set of connections I'll make are to the unit itself, and I'll connect up both of those media players to the back of the unit. And I've got two HDMI cables already connected, and I'll connect those into HDMI input number one and HDMI input number two, just to make it easy. Now I'll connect up the remote receivers, and the connection I'll make from the monitors is through an HDMI cable, and I've already plugged it into the monitor, and that plugs directly into the back of the receiver to the HDMI output port. Now, there is no power at the remote location because this system uses power over cable technology, so the minute I power up the main unit and make the LAN connection between them, the power required for these modules to work is sent over that same LAN connection. So let me add power to the main unit. I've already plugged it in. Here's the plug. I'll plug it into the back of the unit and I'll turn it on. The minute I turn it on, it's starting a power on self-test. You'll hear a beep in a second. That indicates that it's passed its power on self-test and it's ready to use. You'll also notice the display is on in the front. Now again, there's no power in these remote units. The only connection I need to make between the two is a LAN connection. And again, that can be up to 150 meters away over a standard CAT5e, CAT6, or CAT7 cable. Now because I'm short on table space here, I've got shorter LAN cables, which are CAT6, and I'll plug the yellow one into location number one, and the red one into location number two. And then all I have to do is plug these into the back of the modules, and I'll move these over here. Now the minute I plug this in, watch what happens on the front. See that LED come on? That's showing you that power is now being sent to that remote module from the main unit. Let me plug this one in as well. That's the second one. So both of these are now going through a power on self-test. They're checking the electronics inside to make sure everything is working okay. They're checking the resolution of the media being sent. They're checking the resolution of the monitors. They're making whatever adjustments are needed to give you the best possible picture. Now you can see I'm already transmitting those two media players output through this network to these remote sites, both of these remote sites. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Right now, input number one is being sent to remote location number one, and input two is being sent to location number two. But I can change that. So let's say, for example, I want to change location number two to input number one. I hit that and hit enter, and that'll change it right there. You'll notice now that I've got the same input. 
on both of the outputs exactly the same. And you can make that change either using the remote control, using the buttons on the front like I just showed you, or even through software programming by connecting it to a network or to a laptop for you to get in there and actually make those changes. So it really is just that simple to get it working. And what I like so much about it is that it gives me a lot of versatility to make those selections up front if I'm near this main unit, with the remote control, if I'm a little further away, or even over the network, if I happen to be quite a distance away from it, just gives me tremendous amount of versatility to not only extend the media content, again, 150 meters away, but also have complete control over which of those inputs is sent to which of those outputs at any given time. And it really is just that simple to get it working. I hope you found this overview of the UHD88-EXB400R-K 8x8 HDMI extender matrix solution helpful. This professional system allows you to very easily extend up to eight different individual HDMI media streams to remote locations up to 150 meters away over a single Cat5e, Cat6, or Cat7 cable. It fully supports 4K content at 60 frames a second, so you're gonna get the crystal clear picture you need at those remote locations. The power over cable technology means once you plug in the primary unit, all the power that's needed to run those remote locations is sent over that same LAN cable. It provides local loopback functionality here at the primary site, which means you can easily monitor all of the media streams that are being sent to those remote locations. And the fact that it also acts as a matrix gives you complete control over which media stream is being sent to which remote location. And there are a lot of different choices you can make through the remote control, the buttons on the front, or the software control provided with the unit. Pretty much everything you need to get started is included with the kit. And with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks for watching.